the heart. I'm not going to ask you these numbers, but I just thought this was some cool statistics. Your heart beats um, about 100,000 times a day. More if you exercise. I have a friend that says that God knows exactly how many heart beats you're going to have in your life. And if you exercise, you use them all faster. <laughs> Um, about uh, uh, 3,600 gallons of blood per day, about 60,000 miles of blood vessels. So, I mean, the heart is, you know, pretty impressive. It's going to last longer than any appliance that you buy. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, now, just in case, uh, <laughs> it's up here, it's not up here. If I were to draw a triangle, say that this would be the base and this would be the apex, right? Mm -hmm. Remember that from like, I don't know, geometry. Mm -hmm. Okay. The heart is essentially an upside down triangle. So when you look at the heart in the chest, the base is actually the top. We don't want to think about the base being the bottom, but the base is actually the top and the apex is, is the bottom of it. It's kind of upside down. And it's kind of pointed toward uh, the left side of the body. Remember, this is the patient's left. When the heart contracts, particularly the bottom of the chamber of the heart, it contracts from that point up so that blood is pumped out of the top of the heart. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so there's the heart. Now, if you cut the top of your body off and look down into your torso. <laughs> long, long, spinal, or vertebral column, spinal cord right there. Uh, the heart, this area, basically between the lungs that contains the heart, is called uh, the median, mediastinum or mediastinum. I've heard it said both ways. So all that stuff right there in between is basically mediastinum. You know that you have um, serous membranes in your body, right? The pericardium around the heart, the pleural membranes around the lungs, the peritoneum around the digestive system, the digestive organs. We'll talk about all of those. Now, the heart basically has a fibrous pericardium, which is which is different from the serous pericardium. So you have the whole pericardium <laughs> that's divided into the fibrous pericardium and the serous pericardium. So are there two, or it's just one? Well, it's it's they're all attached to one another. But if you talk about the layers, you got the outer layer. If you if you were to open up a mammal and look into its chest cavity, the first thing you're going to be looking at is the fibrous pericardium. And then if you peel that off, you took that fibrous pericardium and you open it up like this, you're going to be looking at part of the serous pericardium that's actually fused to the fibrous pericardium. Now, the serous pericardium, just like every serous membrane, Pleura, the peritoneum, the pericardium, the serous pericardium, and itself has two layers. It has the layer that's actually shrink wrapped onto the surface of the heart called the visceral pericardium. And then it has the layer that's actually physically attached to the fibrous pericardium called the parietal <laughs> pericardium. So if you, if you stab somebody in the chest, the first thing you're going to go through is the fibrous pericardium. And then right on the inside of the fibrous pericardium is the parietal layer of the serous pericardium. Okay. And then shrink wrapped onto the surface of the heart is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. So you would go through um, fibrous, parietal, visceral, heart muscle. Is there like fluid between? Yeah. This space in here is called the pericardial cavity, and it contains the pericardial fluid. And even though there's that space in between, the, those two are still the serous. Yes, both of these. The visceral layer and the parietal layer, or the visceral pericardium, parietal pericardium, 
make up the serous pericardium. Plus the fluid. Well, well, and the fluids of the fluid. Yes. Yes. We have to include that too. Yeah. So if I ask you to tell me the, the layers of the heart, not the layers of the heart, the layers of the pericardium from outside to in, you'll tell me virus pericardium, parietal pericardium, visceral pericardium. And these two things together, these two layers together, make up the serous pericardium. Another way to visualize this, if you take uh, like a water balloon and put your fist in it, the rubber part of the balloon that's touching your fist would be the visceral pericardium. And then the other part of the balloon would be the uh, parietal pericardium. Now, if we actually talk about the heart wall itself, in fact, um, if you pull back, you know, if you open the chest cavity and you look at, take the breastplate off, and you look at the thing, and you, you can pick up that, basically you can pull this part off of the heart, the fibrous pericardium and the parietal pericardium. You can't pull the visceral pericardium off. It is literally physically attached to the heart muscle itself. So it's actually a component of the heart wall. So if I ask you about the layers of the heart wall, the visceral pericardium is also called the epicardium. It's the same thing, it's the same structure, but it has two different names. So you open the chest cavity, you pull that material off the heart, you're looking at the heart. What you're looking at is the epicardium which is the visceral pericardium. If you cut into the heart, that thick layer of heart muscle is called the myocardium. And so all of this stuff between here and here is the myocardium. And then there's a layer of of uh, epithelial tissue that lines the chambers of the heart called the endocardium. Blood vessels 
the inner layer of the blood vessels, the thing that the blood hits, is called the endothelium, which is essentially just epithelial tissue, simple squamous epithelial tissue. They just call it endothelium because it's inside the blood vessels. And so the endocardium, is continuous with the endothelial lining or the endothelium of the blood vessels that are coming out of the heart. So there's no speed bump. When the heart contracts, you don't want, you know how when you're driving along and you come across a bridge and there's always a bump? Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> when the blood leaves the heart, you don't want any kind of bump. You want a smooth flow of that fluid out of the chambers of the heart into the blood vessels. So there's no blood. So the lining of the heart chambers is continuous with the lining of the blood vessels. Is it actually made out of the same? Same. Made out it of just same. changes names. It just changes names. Exactly. If it's inside the heart itself, we call it the endocardium. If it's inside a blood vessel, we call it endothelium. It is all a layer of simple squamous epithelial tissue and a little bit of connective tissue cross-section of a blood vessel. You have the endothelium on the inside of the blood vessel. You have the, now this happens to be smooth muscle. And then the outer surface of the blood vessel, there's a couple of names. It can be called the tunica uh, externa or adventitia. We'll get, don't talk about this today. Adventitia. But this smooth muscle is called uh, the tunica media. And this endothelium is called the tunica interna. Stroke volume, just how much blood leaves each ventricle. So you, on average, at, at 
heart at rest is about, um, well, body at rest, heart's not rest, but is about 70 mils. And so you get 70 milliliters of blood per beat out here, 70 mils out here. If you've got 70 out here and only 60 out here, what's going to happen is blood is going to back up on the venous side of your body. So you've got to have the same amount coming out each time. Okay, so how do I tell them on the front or the back? Okay, it's just like a dog. How do you tell you if you're on the front side of the dog and look for the ears? See the little ears? <laughs> so if you see the little ears, <laughs> you know you're on the front side of the heart. Those little ears are called articles. Now, the chambers, the space inside, atrium, atrium, ventricle, ventricle. Now remember you had ventricles in your brain? Okay. So we have to be careful. These are talking about the heart ventricles, not the brain ventricles, but it's still a space. Now, if we were to take the ear and, and cut it and open it up and look on the inside, you would see a bunch of ridges called pectinate muscles. So, here's the article that's on the front of the atrium. Right? Article. Front wall of the atrium is essentially the article. And you open that up. And on the inner surface of that, you have these ridges called pectinate muscles. Now, on the back wall of the atrium, you don't have those ridges. It's smooth. But on um, basically the front wall, you have the ridges. Now, what they've done with this heart, obviously, they've cut the whole front side of the heart off. And so what you're seeing is just a few of the little pectinate muscles right there. The rest of them would have been what they cut, would be inside what they cut off. When you dissect heart and gland, I look for those. It allows expansion as blood flows back to the heart. Blood coming back to the heart returns to the atrium. If blood is coming from your body, from the systemic circuit, that blood all goes back to the right atrium. And so the articles and those pectinate muscles actually um, allow it gives the chamber some expansion right as blood returns. All right, now, <laughs> so there's, the space behind here is the atrium, but the little flap on the front is the article. Okay, just don't get those confused. Now, your heart is groovy. I don't care how square you are. Your heart is groovy. On the heart, we call the grooves uh, a sulcus, a sulcus, or sulci, or sulci. Now, you can't see the grooves because the grooves are full of uh, cardiac vessels, coronary vessels, and um, adipose tissue to kind of hold the vessels in place. But if you pull all that stuff out, there'd be a little dent, a little groove. Now, <laughs> on the anterior surface, um, basically the groove that runs between the atria and the ventricles is called the coronary sulcus. And that groove runs all the way around, around the back, and then around the front again. So it's almost like putting a little, a little ring right here. Coronary, coronation, crown, a crown around the heart. That's why it's called the coronary sulcus. And so the chambers that are above the coronary sulcus are the atria, the chambers that are below are the ventricles. Okay. And you can see on the posterior surface, this would be where that groove is. So it goes all the way around the heart. It starts on the front here and goes all the way around. That's the coronary surface. The one that goes down the middle of the heart, I love this, anterior interventricular sulcus. It tells me exactly where it is. It's on the front of the heart in between the ventricles. I like it. And so anything on this side, of this groove is going to be the right ventricle. Anything on this side is going to be the left ventricle. Anterior, interventricular, in between the ventricles, like interstate. On the back side, you have its cousin, the posterior interventricular sulcus. Now, anything on this side is what ventricle? Right. Left. Good. Okay. 
because you're on the back side of the heart. Anything on this side is the right one. Now, if you'll notice, from the front of the heart, you can see, wow, the big right ventricle, and it looks like you got a tiny little left ventricle. But on the back side, big left ventricle. So the heart's also not completely facing you straight on, it's turned a little bit. So when you're looking at the heart, you open up the chest cavity, the main thing you're seeing is the front wall of the right ventricle. When you flip the heart over, the main thing you see is the back wall of the left ventricle. Cool. Okay, so that's kind of your landmarks on the outside. 